Thank you very much for letting us uh, present our uh, challenge here today. Um, we're very proud to represent the uh, Carlsberg Group uh, and very excited to tell you about our project, which is about upcycling brewer's spent grain. Um, so first of all, what is brewer's spent grain? Um, because uh, not everybody who's not in the brewing industry would be aware. But basically in the brewing process, it's um, one of the byproducts uh, coming out. So the grain after it's been through the whole process. Um, and it's quite a significant amount of, of a byproduct, you can say. Um, on an industry level, we're talking 39 million tons a year. And Carlsberg Group, being the world's third biggest brewer, uh, has a significant share of that uh, as 1.1 million. But what is really interesting about this byproduct is that it actually has nutritional value. So it consists of 70% fiber and 30% protein, making it super interesting and very relevant for human consumption. Um, so that's what we're here to, to tell you about um, today, basically. Um, so what we did in our project was basically zooming in from an industry level to a Carlsberg specific level. So first we recognized that brewer spent grain from now on, I think we'll refer to it BSG, um, is a very valuable resource and it's quite a significant uh, waste source for, for brewers. And currently we are downcycling it um, where we are arguing that we should instead be upcycling it. So the repurposing uh, can be improved. So looking at this, this challenge, um, we are then focusing on, of, of course, the SDG 12 are responsible consumption and production, but also importantly, 17 on partnerships and, and number two uh, in terms of sewer hunger. Um, so what do we do today? So currently we are um, using two different um, uh, downstream options. So both for, and mainly for cattle feed, where you can, I mean, we all know that cattle has an indirect um, greenhouse gas emissions. So you can argue that indirectly there is, um, and emissions lie here. Um, and secondly, we are also experimenting with various um, startups and other types of companies where this is an example from Denmark, where we, we use it for high-end furniture. So I think it's important to stress here that because it doesn't go to, to landfill and isn't the waste and it is already being um, utilized and repurposed, that's already a good thing. But we are uh, arguing that it can be used better. And by better, we mean that it should be used for human nutrition. And we've looked at that from three uh, key perspectives. So first and foremost, the bioeconomic and emotional perspective with the argument being that if you have um, this material that is used for human nutrition, I mean, supporting it for, for human uh, health and well-being is, of course, uh, an ethically mandated uh, argument and, and can also be, be mandated from a bioeconomic perspective. Um, from the environmental perspective, you can also argue that, of course, it would then reduce the CO2 impact of the final food products that it would be utilized for. It would also help increase the plant-based nutrients out there in, this, in the climate-friendly food um, growing industry. Um, from an economic perspective, we've also learned that there is um, a great potential revenue um, compared to before. Our competitors are also looking into this space. Um, while we were doing this project, the, the biggest brewer, AB InBev, were uh, also exploring this both in terms of making it into an input. So for example, input for milk or flour, uh, all, all kinds of baked goods, and also as a supplement where you can sort of extract the protein out, making, for example, protein powder or the likes, which is super cool. So, um, so this is really um, sort of mandating the opportunity out there. All right, so now I just set the scene a little bit for, for, the, for the challenge and, and the outlook. And now Naomi will take us through the solution. Great, thank you, Tena. So we have basically provided a set of recommendations 
uh, to X common group strategy to consider when it comes to what to do with BSG and how we can improve our management of it. And we have framed those recommendations uh, in a within the context of BSG repurposing toward nutrition. Uh, and we have considered two feed applications and two food applications within this nutrition uh, space. So, and we've rec we have recommended these in a good, better, best setup, recognizing that uh, livestock feed, which we currently uh, do, is already a good solution, but we have opportunities to do a better and best allocation through insect feed, uh, premium consumer goods, as we saw with the ABI example, and even we can consider humanitarian aid. So BSG, uh, it can be, for example, an input for fortified flour in this application more specifically. So that is how we framed our recommendations. And we also sharpened our challenge to the following. So we want to repurpose 100% of BSG from our breweries away from livestock feed toward more sustainable feed and food applications in a hybrid solution that takes a market by market approach. Now, this is important because we recognize that not every application will be equally relevant and positively impactful in each market. So with this recognition, we also have done a market by market analysis to sharpen which application we recommend at the local level. So to do this, we actually used FAO data um, and identified some key metrics that are uh, pertaining to each application. And with the quantitative data behind these, we, un we could understand- we have one minute remaining. One Thank minute. you. We understand, we can understand uh, the relevance and the opportunity for positive impact at the local level per application, per market. So we, using this data, we could map uh, the, different, the different scenarios and realities that we have. And based on these mappings, we could also go through a more quantitative uh, process wherein we could evaluate uh, the, the relevance and positive impact potential of each application. Um, and we could thereby arrive at much more sharp and market specific recommendations, uh, which you will see in the next two slides. So here we have a heat map indicating uh, the, op the opportunity uh, per application across all of our markets. And we have a roadmap of seconds. those recommended uh, applications. So that is the output. Um, and we, as I mentioned, uh, want to present this in a hybrid concept where we diversify repurposing um, and balance that livestock feed and these other applications. In Carlsberg, thank you very much. Thank you thank very you. much. It's been <laughs> quite an interesting presentation, um, but now your time is up and we will yeah. have our judges, Joseph and Mary, um, share their comments also within seven and a half minutes. I'll start with um, just a couple of questions for the team. Thank you so much for your presentation. I was very, um, very interested in your, your idea here. Um, I do have a clarifying question about when you're taking the byproduct downstream, how much water and energy is used to prepare it or convert it into the applications that you're recommending here? Yeah, of course. So that's something we need to, uh, to keep in mind. Um, which is a, a, a very important question. So you can say um, from the greenhouse gas protocol, it will not be accounted for in the Carlsberg uh, CO2 uh, footprint, but of course it would be from, from the final goods. But when you're looking at the final goods, um, this is basically being accounted for as being, uh, like all the, the CO2 has basically been, been, been taken out. So it would be a much better uh, application in, in terms of CO2 compared to if you had to, uh, you know, grow new barley on the fields. Okay, great. And um, I saw that one slide with the heat map and the, the, other, the bubble chart, which was great. What, what are the top two markets that were shown there? I couldn't, couldn't see it or discern it. So by top two, you just mean the ones first in the list? Uh, we have- well, I know, There's a bunch of them, but like, what, what were the big ones? I, the more yeah, so so it depends uh, which application uh, you want to focus on. So, for example, uh, taking a very uh, simple and clear example, if we're talking about humanitarian aid as an application, Denmark on this application scores a zero because it's not relevant or necessary, and we have a zero uh, chance to to contribute positive impact locally through local supply of VSG here. Whereas in a country like Cambodia, for example, the need is there and there is an opportunity for us to supply that locally um, and to contribute to, to 
food aid programs through this uh, nutritional resource, for, for example. Um, so that's how that heat map works. So essentially, we want to draw focus to where the green boxes are. Mm -hmm. And then where countries have more than two green boxes, we take the application that is higher on that conceptual ladder. So really uh, doing the, doing that extra step of really upcycling the nutrients further up that ladder and really making sure that we maximize that potential of this nutritional resource that we're sitting on. So that is that is a bit more of an academic approach, but it's at least uh, yeah, using great. real world data. Um, yeah, it gets you focused. Yeah, trying to sharpen it further. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, Mary, any comments or questions? Sure, I think great work, Tim Carlsberg. Um, I think you did quite a lot in terms of the different perspectives, the economic, uh, emotional, and I think bioeconomic, if I'm not wrong. I think the slides were too detailed. I could not really see clearly the roadmap and uh, all that. But um, if I got it uh, correctly, your solution is going to reduce the carbon footprint. And so my question would be by how, how much margin will that uh, be? And also, what could be your next steps? I didn't get the business model as well, but I'm interested to know what's your business model and your next steps as well. Yeah, and that was actually the last slide that you saw. Uh, so we can just put a few words on that. So we recommend uh, the business model to be a partnership wherein we really um, bring in that external expertise from many uh, specialized companies out there who have that technical know-how as to how you can actually process this into the most uh, um, uh, effective uh, nutritional goods. And your question regarding carbon footprint, now that really depends first on your on, on a decision whether you use BSG as an input or as a supplement ingredient to a food product. So that is already one big decision that will frame that carbon impact very differently. Second of all, it's also a question as to how much of that um, processing of BSG that you give to a partner, whether we take that on in-house or not, and what that, op that physical operation then looks like. Um, do, do we, for example, dry the product in-house? It first has to be dried. Do we then stabilize it in-house? And then do we sell it onward or do we outsource it all? And depending on who does the job, that final carbon footprint will change again. So there are a lot of moving parts to this. So it's very hard to put an exact number because there are different options, which our job was to lay out on the table for leadership to know about and to consider. So now in the next months, uh, we hope that we can then help those decisions and inform you know, what those specific implications are depending on, on that decision process, because it, it will change with every decision that is made regarding these options. Yeah. And just to be very clear in terms of the solution we are, the problem we are facing is basically that we have this uh, byproduct that has nutritional value that currently mainly across all our markets that we're operating goes to cattle feed. Mm -hmm. So it's not, it's not, of course it is reducing CO2, but it's mainly saying that this should be upcycled into better use. So instead of going to cattle feed, it should go to directly to human nutrition. Um, I hope that clarifies your question. Um, and, and just to also to build further on what, um, what Naomi was saying before, mm -hmm. that we've also specifically looked into what types of partners could be interesting, yeah. um, which are some of the, some of the, thing, some of the companies we've looked into here are, have some of the capabilities that could be relevant for us. Um, and, and we actually also already had the opportunity to, to present at our, um, Carlsberg external supervisory board. Uh, so, so, yeah, uh, sustainability supervisory board, and they also had really um, great. Um, they really, yeah, really, really liked it. Really liked the project. So, um, so we are excited to see see where it goes. Thank you. Great work. Uh, maybe one more additional question, if we have time, will be like the uh, type. We, of we have just a minute, actually. Okay. All right. Thank you very much, Team Carlsberg.